Hello, this is KT. I am going to work a little bit more on the cover of my journal. Um, the last video that you saw, I was um, painting this stamped face right here. Um, today, even though I didn't do it on film, I went ahead and worked on her face. And I decided to have her complexion be a little lighter, which meant that the pink background I allowed to show through the skin tone. And I just went um, over um, just giving her some shadows. I did the eyes. The same process that I did for this face, I did for her. The only thing I did was I just didn't add as many layers of color. I just went really light on um, her complexion because when I do different faces I like to have different reflections reflected. I don't just for me I don't like um, the one skin tone fits all for um, anything especially um, projects that show um, people of color. You know, we all have different skin tones and um, that's why when I paint an African American face or a black face, um, I do a lot of layers and I let a lot of colors show through and because when you look at your own face, no one's all one color. So. I just try to stay true to what I know and just reflect different um, shades of skin tone. What I'm going to do today is actually try to incorporate some paper onto the cover. I want to use some scrapbook paper um, as the body for her. And then I may or may not paint an angel wing, or maybe I'll piece together some paper. I don't really know yet, but I'm at the stage this year where I have so much, so many scrapbooking supplies, I have to get rid of it. I have to. So I'm either going to sell it, give it away, or incorporate it into my art. Um, for about two or three years... I was getting a lot of kits, really nice kits from Studio Calico, and I had to stop. I had to stop. So through all of my videos where I'm incorporating um, scrapbooking supplies, it all comes from Studio Calico and um, Classy Girl, which from Scraps of Color, Tiare, TR. She doesn't sell her kits anymore, but she also used to sell a lot of scrapbooking packages that I um, bought over the years so beginning last year I decided cold turkey no more papers no more buttons no more brads no more bling nothing I've got to start using what I have this paper right here is from one of the studio calico um, kits and they do they still sell kits beautiful kits their kits come with um, paper, bling, stamps. It's a really, really nice package that they have going on. Anyway, this is Loft Swirls. L-O-F-T Swirls. Item number 24483. It has two sides. This is one side. It's like a Harlequin um, pattern, which would be actually great for men and boys. And then the flip side is um, just swirls and dots and I think that will go along better with my cover and I also have buttons that I'm gonna put on her dress and these buttons are by Stella and Rose um, it's made for Stella and Rose by my mind's eye and it's style number 33 um, I tried the music because I really wasn't feeling well and sometimes I feel like I talk way too much in um, when I'm trying to create. 
and also it's sorry for shaking the camera it's it's distracting sometimes for me so I found some really nice soothing license free music at um, two sites beatpick.com and another one Moby gratis or gratis and what you do is you just find the music that you like and then you um, pretty much apply for permission to um, get the music and then they'll send you an email and you use your music their music and then you don't have to worry about YouTube either silencing you all together or taking your video off anyway I'm thinking I'm going to put her body right here and the weird thing is I'm an artist I have pens and paint and I cannot find a pencil anywhere so I'm going to pretty much wing it with a sharpie and I figure paint and paper hides all so I'm thinking that I'll cover her neckline and come out like that I'm not really going to you know do a lot of detail on um, you know have it be realistic I just want something that's gonna represent clothes so if you get bored you can pause it or I don't know when I look through the um, when I play this back there may be some things that I um, delete but I'm going to try my best to take you guys through the whole entire process of what I'm going to do and already I see that this is really well it's not too bad um, I have a bend right here so I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more and all of this I'm not really worried about the pen marks because I'm going to hide it the edges with um, paint and if you're not a painter you can definitely take one of your ink pads and just brush along the edges to give you some shading like I said my goal for um, one of my goals I won't say the only goal but one of my goals for 2013 is to really just use what I have you know we spend so much money on scrapbooking supplies and then I mean I applaud the people that get out there and use it and keep the companies in business but I just felt like I wasn't really um, I wasn't using it I was wasting money so I'm going to I guess that's what mixed media is all about using what you have nothing going to waste and incorporating everything that we can into our work um, I know a lot of people use Mod Podge a lot of people use the gel mediums I am one of these people that I mean I've been painting a long time and I can remember when it was just Mod Podge and I swear I can never get a smooth application of Mod Podge for anything so to adhere this I'm going to use Golden's soft gel Oh, well, maybe I'll use the hard gel Golden's medium and as you can see I'm gonna use the regular gel I um, have wax paper underneath because there are times when I don't um, you know use this stuff and then I swear I go to try to open it and I have to run and get a rubber glove and wrench it open so this time I'm playing it smart and everything like golden gel medium any type of glue I just put um, wax paper here and I'm telling you it makes it so much easier 
to um to get the top off. So I'm gonna wet this a little. I don't really know. I mean, I watch so many videos and so many people do stuff so many different ways. So I'm not. I'm just gonna get this puppy down. And I still don't understand why I can be so successful with soft gel mediums and I cannot with regular Mod Podge. But whatever works, adding a little water, um, like I said, I'm not really concerned about the Sharpie pen marks. I'm more concerned with um, gluing this down and then I probably well I know this has a bend in it right here so I'm gonna bend it and try to get the paper in the crease I already foresee that that's gonna be an issue so maybe I need to um trim it I'm really happy with the way my stamps come out. I'm already finding that I can paint her in so many different looks. And again, like I said, um, I guess the number one thing for me is I don't want to be sued. I don't want to start creating and, you know, who knows, maybe I, I do sell my journals. I haven't sold any of my journals like this yet I I keep them for samples but um I don't want to get to the point where I sell I'm gonna cut this I sell um stuff and then a company puts the hammer down because I'm using their images so for me I'm finding that um my images are going to work perfect for me and I encourage anyone to just give it a try it's fun to carve blocks and even if you don't carve blocks you can do a little doodle and um, do an electronic line drawing they call them digi stamps these days but from the old artist days it's just a line drawing and you can just print it out transfer your own image and you don't have to worry about a corporation coming after you for, you know, just trying to make a little money to um, you know, try to make a little money for your designs and the really nice creations I see out there. So I think it's pretty much it's a little it's not really dry dry but I'm gonna go ahead and um, work on this a little bit and I figure after I put paint on it and more uh, glazing medium I put glazing medium over everything um, I use Joe Sonia glazing medium when I used to be a one-stroke instructor I got a ton of folk art glazing medium so I use glazing medium over every everything that I paint because I'm messy and that way if I spill something or splatter something once there's glazing medium over it it seals your surface and you can just come back and you can just wipe off what you don't want there so like I said if you're not a painter and you're not into floating color you can take um, your ink and you can ink the edges um, but I'm gonna just I have the ink but I want this to be I want more paint than paper and again when I look back at this video if I think I'm rambling 
um, my voice will cut out and you will hear music but I do get um, people saying that they do like the to hear the thought process and as you can see I do switch hands it took me a long time to um, teach myself to paint with my left hand but I my day job I'm on the computer a lot and it's actually not to <laughs> I tell myself to do things with my left hand not to preserve my strength for work but to preserve my strength to paint if that makes any sense so a lot of times you'll see me switch hands right to left um, and also if you teach art um, when I was a one-stroke instructor in the early 90s um, not the early 90s I got my OSCI in 1999 2000 and that was before and right after I got it I taught a little bit and then I started toll painting and just evolved from there but the one thing I found as a one-stroke instructor is there are a lot of lefties out there and a lot of times it's easier for them if they can actually see how you do the strokes with your left hand as opposed to you know asking them to adapt you know you're a righty and they're a lefty so over the years I have um, just taught myself to um, paint with my left hand out of comfort and it also I do everything with my left hand now and I am right-handed but I just find that um, carpal tunnel that I've had once in my life I've never gotten it again after I um, started with my ambidextrous type of creating I am going to when I saw these buttons I was like oh that's kinda cute and um, see it's drying and I'm thinking maybe adding these buttons down here and it's actually kind of like the way I dress. I'm not a frou-frou, frilly type of girl. I'm more of a tomboy. And I think it would be kind of cute. Also, I don't know about anybody else, but when you get these kits with these cute buttons, are you ever tempted to just use the buttons for your regular clothes? I know I am. I love white shirts. And I like to... I can have four or five white Oxford shirts and just change out the buttons and some of these scrap looking buttons are really really beautiful but I'm gonna use it for this I have two more buttons but I think this is really this was the look I was going for this is really cute and like I said this paper and these buttons I got out of a Studio Calico kit. It was one of the last kits that I got before I decided not to spend any more money on scrapbooking supplies. So this all came in the same kit and I believe it was the August 2012 um, kit. This is, uh, I love this stuff. This is Ink Essentials Glossy Accents by Ranger. I use it for everything. A lot of times when I'm painting eyes, I'll take the glossy accents and just put it over the eyes and it really makes a nice three-dimensional um, effect that I really, really like. I do that for cards, ATCs. Um, I think I use glossy accents more than I use the, um, the ATG gun, which is another thing that... Um, I love it but the tape is so expensive even if I get it from overstock.com so I use uh, the glossy accents it sets really fast it dries really fast and it dries clear so I'm gonna put my buttons down and if you're looking at my palette I don't know if you can see it this is one of my favorite, favorite things from a fellow artist in Australia. I belong to the Aussie Tollers list for about 10, 15 years. This was 
before Facebook, before Twitter, before Ning, everybody was on Yahoo or eCircles. And um, we did a lot of exchanges, artist exchanges. And one of the artists, she actually made this clipboard. And it's just a little teddy bear holding a little paintbrush. And I use it as a palette. I was going to paint it, but I decided to use it as a palette. And I've gone through so many different palettes, but these days I just use freezer paper. I, I just tape it on the back with painter's tape so it doesn't mar the wood. And um, it's just, you know, really cute. And it also forces me not to use so much paint because I waste a lot of paint. And the smaller the palette, the less paint I use, the less paint I waste. But anyway... Here is her dress. This is going to be more of a folk art. Like I said, I'm not going for realism. I'm trying to be a little more spontaneous, looser with my art cover journal. Even though I am in the process of painting, well, sketching realistic portraits. This is also another exercise for another video. But, um... It's pretty much dry. I mean, it's still damp, but the I, I think what I like about the golden gel medium, and this is what it was just a regular. I don't know if Mod Podge isn't heavy enough, or the the subjects I try to the paper that I use with Mod Podge is too thick, but I don't get bubbles, and I hate the bubbles. I hate that you have to keep rolling out Mod Podge, and you guys saw what I just did with the gel medium. No bubbles, it's clean, it's set. Um, this stuff is magic. This is just a regular gel medium. And here is uh, the body. And I'm thinking of maybe adding an angel wing. I don't know. I mean, I love angels, but I'm so fixated on feathers. And for the life of me, I cannot do feathers justice but I think I'm just gonna give myself a little outline of like I said I'm trying to just wing it not be so rigid and this is just cheesecloth that I'm using it's not um, it's not um, uh, paper towels it's just cheesecloth and I got into the habit of using cheesecloth by taking classes online classes with Sharon Tomlinson she has a name group and she does some fabulous work. I just actually finished a, um, an online seminar with her. It was 18 weeks and it was a study in, it's called the Diary of Faces. So if you go to Sharon, no, if you go to allnorrisart.ning.com, you'll see she has a ton of really comprehensive, um, online classes and I've taken um how do wings go I guess it doesn't matter it's my project <laughs> I've taken um Dire of Faces Faces in Technicolor um I think she has some collage things and you definitely get your money's worth okay Angel's Wings go like that in the bottom of the wing and this see this is where I, I go get into problems I'm so fixated on trying to get something right when I really should just make the daggone angel wing the way I want to make it so it's the beginning of my wing I was gonna use paper but I think I'm going to use paint and I'm really I'm using a, this is a Northwest Painters Harvest number one liner by Scharf. S-C-H-A-R-F-F. -F. And you will see a lot. I don't, um, I won't use pencil. Well, I can never find a pencil when I need it. But I will just brush, brush sketch. I'll do a lot of my sketches with the brush. 
And it's almost like using a Sharpie because I feel like once it's there, you've made a commitment to your surface and you just got to deal with it. Um, to go back to the cheesecloth, Sharon uses cheesecloth and I, it's really, it's great. I mean, it takes the paint, you can use it on your surface, cleans the brushes, and then once it's really a catastrophe, you could just throw it away. The one thing I will tell you is I tried to find the cheesecloth everywhere. Target, um, Walmart, I hate Walmart, but I went in there, I couldn't find it. And it, I was like, this is ridiculous. Cheesecloth is such a generic cooking utensil. But then I thought, you know, people probably don't even know anything about canning. That it would be near the mason jars and things. And sure enough, I went back to Walmart. Went to um, the sewing section. <laughs> and there was a cheesecloth with the fabric. I was floored. It was crazy. Um, this is a uh, this brush is one of my one stroke brushes from Donna Dewberry. It's actually supposed to be for glass and ceramics, but I mix up all my paper, all my brushes. This is a number eight filbert, and like I said before, I have a lot of um, supplies from my one stroke certified teaching days, and. I'm trying to remember okay when you do feathers they're layered bottom to top so I'm gonna switch my turn this around hope you guys can see this let me check before I start yeah you can see it so I'm going to use my filbert to do the first layer of the wing and this is just I'm using Liquitex burnt umber and just mixing it up a little bit with white and I'm starting from the tip of the wing and I already see that it's watery. That that's okay. And I'm just going to I bet you I'm doing this backwards. But I have to remember the old adage that there's there're no mistakes in art, none. And I'll be able to come back and flip uh Right now I'm leaving the background showing a little bit because I'm not really too concerned uh, since I'm going to add white, maybe some other colors. And don't ask me why I couldn't make these strokes with it the other way, but I find a lot of times that I do turn my surface. And you can dip your brush in white and other colors just to add more dimension so because when you look at feathers almost like skin tones they're not totally white you know it's a variety of layers I when I look at feathers I see um, some grays some blacks and browns and um, I just really want to fill out this space but yeah I think I I think I turned it the right way and I'm just doing a this is the actually probably like the um, the pedal stroke when you just press lift press lift press lift This is the same stroke that you that I use for um, painting hydrangeas. I'm not really going to go close to the edge because I'm going to highlight, um, not highlight, I'm probably going to shade the very edge with black. So, and I don't want to go back over her dress. 
So, this is the beginning of the angel. And I have to say, I'm happy. This is not how I envisioned this art journal cover to look like when I first started. But I guess that's the whole point. So I'm going to let her dry. And, um... Let her dry and come back to this a little later. But this is KT. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something and um, hopefully you found it somewhat informative and I didn't ramble too much. And... Like I said, some of my videos will just be on music. Some of my videos will be me talking. It just depends. Um, I feel a lot better today. There's no hacking and coughing. And the last thing I want to do is cough throughout a video. So I'm going to let this really dry. I mean, it's still damp. But I'm going to let it dry. The buttons, let those set. And then um, I'll come back and work on it a little bit more. This is KT. Happy crafting.